Okay, here we're going to be looking at collecting and comparing tool marks, which often are very important pieces of evidence in a crime scene. So first off, a tool mark, it's defined as any impression, cut, gouge, or abrasion caused by a tool coming in contact with another object, and they are typically found in forced entry um, scenarios. We see here a, in a door kind of prying it open. We see the tool marks definitely left here to help uh, open that door when it was probably in the locked position. Now when we compare tool marks, again there's a lot of different types of tools, but tool mark impressions can reveal class characteristics or, or the size and shape of the tool. Because for example, a crowbar is going to leave a much larger impression than a small screwdriver. Typically we're unable to connect the marks to one specific tool unless there's a random nick or break that tool has acquired, giving it individual um, characteristics. If we look here at a pair of bolt cutters that were used to cut a locked shackle, the comparison micro photograph shows evidence of the lock shackle on the left side and the test cut produced by the bolt cutters and a piece of lead on the right. You can see that there's definitely um, a pretty close match on many of those uh, ridges and valleys there. We're looking at unique wear patterns. The edges of a tool display microscopic irregularities that look like ridges and valleys as a result of the manufacturing process. It's just a normal kind of uh, end product. Uh, damage and wear of the tool when used creates a variety of unique patterns, which again can help with the, identif uh, the identification or matching process. These imperfections can be used to identify individual tools. We can see here uh, a knife edge of a suspect's knife when compared or matched to a piece of a rib cage from a victim. And we're noticing these ridge and valleys have a lot of similar characteristics and almost directly match up. So again, this can be used to help tie in a particular knife to a crime scene, not just a knife to a crime scene. And when we're doing these comparisons, it's important that when a tool is scraped against a softer surface, it may cut a series of striated lines that reflect the pattern of the tool's edge, as we can see here, and, com and compared using a, a comparison microscope with test tool marks made by the suspect's weapon to see if there are, in fact, uh, ridges and valleys that can be matched up. And in the image we see here where the line splits the left to the right, you can see uh, a lot of consistencies there in that comparison. Now problems with tool mark uh, comparisons are that they can be difficult to duplicate. The tool mark left at the crime scene in the laboratory uh, must make test uh, marks of various angles and different pressures to see if a match can be made. There's also a lot of different kind of cut mark shapes. There's Y cuts and T cuts and V shapes. And a lot of this comes down to the pressure, the angle, um, and it can be hard to recreate that ex all those exact kind of uh, factors in a lab, uh, and this is why typically multiple lab uh, laceration marks need to be made, multiple impressions need to be made in the lab to be able to compare it to what was found at the crime scene. Now it's collecting of tool mark evidence. The entire object or part of the object bearing the tool mark should be submitted to the laboratory for evidence. When the tool mark cannot be uh, from the crime, can that be removed from the crime scene? Other options such as taking a picture or making a cast should be Im implemented. Liquid silicone, the best material to use for casting, and a lot of detail can be lost when you're forced to use a photograph and a cast, so it's best to add the actual image, but something is better than nothing. So lastly, when we have that piece of evidence that is found, we want to be sure that we're handling it with care. Never attempt to fit a suspect's tool into the tool mark as it could alter the mark and question the integrity of the evidence. The suspect tool and mark are packaged in separate containers to keep from destroying their individual characteristics. This can be trace evidence like paint chips on the tool or impressions. Must be careful when handling and packaging evidence so you don't lose any potential trace evidence. And we can see here of a nice little storage area for a knife uh, that that may have some blood evidence, that's why it has the biohazard symbol, but this is going to help maintain all of those potential individual characteristics without causing any alterations, so it can be entered as evidence in a crime scene.